okay. We gotta win this one. Okay. Out the jump, let's go. Let's go, man, let's go. Here we go. It's about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. They get the dough down. Okay, meet at the quarterback. Bye week is complete and Vikings football is back as we welcome you inside the TCO studios for another edition of the Audible presented by 3M. My name is Gabe Henderson. I got Tatum Everett alongside me. And for the first time in the history, the two year history of this show, <laughs> we got coaches on. We got Vikings outside linebackers coach Mike Smith. Shake and bake. Inside linebackers coach. Shake and bake. Inside linebackers coach Greg Minuski. Shake and bake. Explain that. Oh, Talgate Knights. You've never okay. seen it with yeah. the do it? Yeah, you know what I'm talking He's, about. Yeah. Yeah. Brothers. Yeah, we're brothers. <laughs> so you know what to do with said Step Brothers, the movie, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know, you know, bye week just passed, and uh, Ed Donatel, when, when I saw him earlier this week, the first thing he said was, make sure you get these two guys on the show because I want to use this footage in meetings this week. Why, why would he say that about you two guys? We're pranksters, pretty much, you okay. know. Okay. Players and coaches. <laughs> oh, no. <sorry. laughs> She almost got Why'd you jump right like there? that? <laughs> <laughs> you actually scared me. The high pitch. She had a heart attack. I love it. All right. I know where your office is. Oh, very good. You, well, this is so, yeah, yeah, we thought we could throw a prank on you a little bit. I like it. I actually. Okay. Uh, Okay. So you're Sounds good, you're good. good. Sounds good. Oh, good. Yeah. I have to tell you uh, a, a quick story about Greg here. So he, he gets here. Um, at the same time every every morning, it's like around 5:30. You can always hear him coming in. You know he's making all this noise, and so then he goes from his office to the coffee machine. This guy's routine. So I ran in his office, got underneath his desk, and uh, you know the front of the desk has that wooden board. You can't see anything, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm laying underneath there, and he's coming in. He's talking to himself. So I come out underneath the desk. <laughs> when I say he screamed so loud, it was unbelievable. Hits the wall. Then steps on her little back roller, falls on the ground, no. hits his foot on the thing, and still screaming. At what and point, cut. At say, what point do you realize that you're at the office and nothing bad's gonna happen to you? Then we both laid on the floor just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we start our day. Yeah. So were, were you okay? Yeah, I was all right. Okay. It was fun. Yeah. Okay. I still gotta get him paid pay back. I was gonna say, dude, what's the retaliation at this point? Oh, he uh, does, trust me, he does plenty. Yeah, I, I scare him once in a while. In the morning, <laughs> I just bang his door as loud as I can, <laughs> you know? And he's in there working, and it's just fun. You guys are always on alert. You gotta be like looking over your shoulder at all times. I, I feel like you don't need coffee if you're an inside linebacker or outside linebacker in you guys' room, because you bring the energy every day, right? Dang right, we do. Yeah, I think that's just part of, you know, coaching. You know, I think, um, you know, we like to have a good time, but we like to work too, and so, um, I think that's like the perfect medium you got to find, especially with these players. You know, you can't be too hard and you can't be too easy, you know. And so um, as long as they know when to work and when to play, I think people get that confused sometimes when they, hey, you, these guys say these guys have a good time all the time. We work and we work hard, but, uh, you know, I think the guys enjoy it. Just staying a little bit loose at times and, and uh, you know, same thing as coaches. It, it becomes a long day, you know. You're up here so early in the morning, you're up here so late at night, and you get kind of worn down. You like to... Have a little fun every once in a while. We had Mike on the podcast a little bit a uh, while ago, I guess over the summer, and Greg, he talked about kind of the same thing. You flirt that line between like fun and games, but hard work, but that it helps to bring the room together early on if you set that tone with something a little bit more lighthearted. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's you know, we're working for them and they're working for us, you know, as players, you know, and it, it's got to be a good combination between, you know, us you know, having some fun in the meetings at times. And then actually when sometimes it involves out on the field, maybe you're getting a little bit ticked off at them or what they do. But, you know, it's always that positive thing first. You teach them and then get into the negative stuff. But overall, you know, they got to have fun because this is a long, long season, you know, especially 18, 19, 20 weeks where we want to get to the Super Bowl. You know, it's going to, you know, we have 15 more games, you know, going into it right now. Love it. Uh, well, we want to have some fun to, to start this show off. Uh, we got two cards in front of you. Fans that have seen the first six episodes of the show know that we start this show off with a game called Two Truths and One Lie. Uh, so, Greg, we're going to start with you. Okay. Uh, we're going to have you turn your card over. Okay. We're going to have you read it out for our radio audience. And, Mike, it's up to you to figure out which two sentences are true and which one is a lie. I used to sleep with a whistle beside my bed the night before games when I first became an NFL coach. Definitely true. Okay. During my 12-year career, 
All right, I had a stint in which I played in 113 consecutive games. Mm. One of my first nicknames in the NFL was Moondog and Pookie. I think the last one's not true. He's right. Really? Yeah. Okay. Now I got to get this one. <laughs> know your coaches. Okay. Your teammates. <laughs> All right. I majored and received a degree in communications while at Texas Tech. No way. Uh, I was voted by the fan base of having the sexiest body on the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> staff. Um, I get literally goosebumps on my arms when I get excited about certain plays. Uh, I think you're the sexiest man on the staff. Yeah, that one's true. It was actually the goosebumps on my arms. Really? <laughs> no, I actually lied about the <laughs> sexiest body. That's not true. <laughs> the second one, I'll tell you, I was a seventh round uh, linebacker drafted by the Baltimore Ravens. All right. So I got a communication degree. Right. Or got drafted in the seventh round by the Baltimore Ra Ravens, or I literally get goosebumps on my arms when I get excited about certain plays. When you came out, how many rounds were there? Seven. Seven rounds. That's correct. And then the goosebumps. And then what was the first one? Uh, got a degree in communications, Texas Tech. You're a smart Which, guy. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> right. Interviews right now. I'm doing a great job. Greg. <laughs> Communication yeah. wise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last one. I think they're all true. I don't know which one. So the middle one says I was the seventh line. Oh, 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 oh tricky. <laughs> well, well that leads in the communication and yeah. reading <laughs> yeah. correctly. I just saw the seventh, seventh round. Good. That's kind of a trick question. I was going to say, when you were saying, you know, talking about the first set of ones you said, that it'd be really uncomfortable if Gabe had written that about you. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. It been really weird. I, yeah. I, but I, I felt like it would be a compliment, <laughs> too, right? Right? You know, sure. a compliment. I mean, being, you know, a, a well-looking coach here. Yeah, from I Minnesota. get that compliments all the time. <laughs> I, I thought that your nickname was Pookie. No, it wasn't Pookie. It was okay. Manu. Manu? Manu. Okay. Manu? Explain yeah. that. M-A-N-U. Why, why did they call you Manu? Is it the last know, name, I guess, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really to it. I mean, I feel no. like usually we do this for an icebreaker for players, but mm -hmm. with you two, there's not really an icebreaker like, necessary. You guys just other. honestly have a lot of fun. You walk in having fun, as we talked about just a second ago, <laughs> yeah. right? But the communications degree, Mike, uh, it w was broadcasting something that you possibly wanted to pursue once you got done playing football? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed the classes. I, you know, took a couple classes early on in, in my college career and, and just liked it. I liked getting up, talking in front of people and... Instead of writing papers, you know. You can instantly tell that you guys have a connection. And we talked to a lot of these players about the locker room and what's different about this particular team. And they often speak at how special the bonds they've created are and how close these guys are. When you look at it from a coaching perspective, what is the bond of this coaching staff like? I think it's exactly like the players, you know what I'm saying? I think, you know, you come in here with a, a, a head coach that I've known in the past, of course, and. Uh, you know, just brings those values to the team, you know, uh, playing for your buddy, playing for your coach, playing for, you know, the organization. And uh, overall, I, I, that's who Kevin is, and that's what we're doing. I mean, the majority of the guys, I don't think there's one really bad coach in this building, or anybody really, you know, that I got to know over the uh, six months I've been here. Understanding that both of you guys were former linebackers in the NFL, as a fan, like, when do you know that you're ready to play in the NFL as a player versus when you know you're able to be a good NFL head coach or NFL coach. Player-wise, um, I think it's when you get out there and you prove yourself that you can do it. Okay. You know, um, I think it's kind of a, you know, speaking for Greg, but it was kind of a little bit of a culture shock when you get there. You know, I played for the Ravens and Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and Terrell Suggs and Deion Sanders and Jamal Lewis and I mean, you can go on with all these guys. Haloti Nada, uh, it's kind of a lot, you know. And then when you realize, hey, this is. This is just a game and not letting the devil creep in and put doubt in your heart. Um, that's when it comes to it. And then I think with coaching, um, you know, it's funny because as Mike Pettin and Rex Ryan told me, uh, you know, because I was a little bit of an overachiever, uh, wasn't the best athlete, but I could pick up things quick. And, and so, but uh, they, the first thing they told me is you think you know, but you don't know. And they couldn't be more true, you know. See, it was weird oh, because go. yeah, when I was in, uh, I was in, Mankato and actually Tony Dungy was our defensive coordinator mm -hmm. and he came up to me hey one of the practices going out he goes you ever think about coaching I went the heck no I ain't <laughs> gonna be coaching I'm not doing what you guys are doing sure enough it led wow. me to it so wow. what did you know like what 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 was that moment for you uh 
I think uh, when I was in Sandy, or, uh, Kansas City at the time, you know, I had a lot of uh, Donnie Edwards, the younger player and stuff, and uh, Randall Godfrey, and uh, not Randall Godfrey, but I'm just saying, uh, just, you know, trying to help him out with the calls and things, you know, like give the coach, and mm -hmm. the coach knew I was trying to just help him out as much as possible. So, you know, it just, just kind of ran through, and then I decided, hey, you know, I got done playing, took a year off, and then I got right back, and I got into coaching, so. I mean, you played in the league under guys like Joe Gibbs, Denny mm -hmm. Green, Marty Schottenheimer. I mean, is that, did that, how did that mold, I guess, maybe the coach that you are today? Well, I, I, I think all those guys, you know, helped me develop who the person I am and the coach that I am. I think overall, I mean, I had some great coaches and, you know, and just, you know, Dave Adolph was one of my coaches in Kansas City, great guy. And um, I just respected him for what he did and what he did for the players and try to resemble a little bit of what he does and care about the players, you know, and care about, you know, their families and everything. And those relationships that you have with these players, you know, it's, it's not it's going to grow over time when we're here for hopefully a long time. Well, well, we don't have any more time in the first segment of this show, but you guys will be here for the second segment. So Vikings fans, stay tuned. Greg Minuski, Mike Smith, Vikings linebackers coaches will be back for another edition of The Audible after the break. All right, we are back. This is The Audible presented by 3M. Uh, Tatum Everett's alongside me. My name is Gabe Henderson. We got Vikings linebackers coach, inside linebackers coach Greg Minuski, and outside linebackers coach Mike Smith on the show today for the first time in the history of the show we've had coaches and um right before the break tatum asked greg you know about your experience coaching yeah coaching under marty schottenheim and denny green and uh i was doing some research and then i guess in 2006 or 2005 you were in san diego you were the linebacker coach of san diego which would have been the same draft that mike smith would have been coming out of college out of texas tech yeah did you ever get a chance to scout him as a linebacker and if if so or if not how would you scout him uh, I, he was a good looking guy okay. back then, not now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn good. Uh, I truly, I don't remember. Okay. Okay. And I, it, it would have been funny to actually, it was 2005? Yeah. Gosh, I'm <laughs> an old. Well, you made a face when he said he wasn't the best athlete. So I kind of thought maybe you had some insight. No, I was the best. I wasn't a good athlete either. <laughs> I just ran down on kickoffs and punts and stuff like that and made a it career worked. out of it. It worked. And you know what's yeah. funny about this whole thing you're talking about? I don't even think I've ever shared this with you. Um, I was actually going to San Diego. Oh, wow. Um, they call me as a free agent, and uh, the Ravens end up drafting me in the seventh round. So clearly you saw something. You just didn't, <laughs> you just didn't know. <laughs> There's a guy in West Texas, you know, that was out there yeah. running people over. Busting and, his yeah. butt, yeah. Probably yeah. reminded me of yourself a little bit. Yeah, I did. You know. <laughs> All right. How about that? I, I didn't even tell you that. I didn't, I didn't even know that, that. That was in 2005. That wow. was kind of a no. weird deal. That's brilliant. Um. <laughs> I knew there was a connection. I knew there was yeah, something. There's something. What it was. I don't know what it I is. I do. I like that. I like that. Well, uh, the Vikings are inducting Jared Allen to the Ring of Honor this weekend. Um, what do you admire about Jared and Jared's uh, career in the league, Greg? I just think overall a very good player, you know, a student of the game uh, and had a lot of success, you know. I think over, over his career, I don't know exactly how many sacks that he had, but gosh, I know he was a big part of offenses trying to block, you know, one human being that uh, really, you know, made a, an impact in the league. And it's great that he's inducted into the ring of honor. That's awesome. You like the Ropa? I feel like you're a fan of the Ropa I am. celebration. You know, when I think of Jared Allen, I just think about his motor. You know, I know everybody loves the sacks, but his motor, man, that guy was just nonstop all the time. You know, like what I want to train my guys and have my guys play, put on a, a, a tape of Jared Allen and, and uh, that's how I want him to play. He definitely deserves it. How do you, as a coach, how do you coach a guy with a motor like that? Well, I mean, I, one, I look for guys like that. You know, we talk about drafting, you know, it's times have changed a little bit. It's kind of find a high, f hard to find guys that have that motor and that are tough, you know, but uh, I think one is you got to find that guy. You're, you're usually born with it. You know, you're born an oak or you're born a willow. And so you try to find those guys and then when they get here, you got to establish that with the other guys that in your room. You know, bringing Zadarius Smith here, right? And already having Daniel Hunter here. There's a certain way you play. And some of these newer guys that come in the room, like, you know, Benton we just got, and you pop on the tape, uh, he's going to be a fish out of water if he, if he doesn't play like that. 
That's, that's so impressive that you can come up with these, like, you got to be an oak or a willow. I, I love these coaching <laughs> analogies. You heard that one before? I honestly have never heard that one before. You're born, yeah, you're born tough. I never you're heard. Not. I'm not from Texas. I, don't know. <laughs> I figured it was a bit of a love, Texas. Lubbock, Texas slang. That's a little bit of West Texas, I guess. Yeah. Uh, West Texas. No, I like that. Well, when you when you look for an inside linebacker, what is is how how important is the motor to you? I think it's huge. You know, I, I like to see guys that can strike, separate, and get off blocks and stuff. You know, and you know, in college now, it's a little bit different. You know, there's a lot of you know, jet motions, all quarterback keeps and stuff like that. So it's kind of when we played, it was more downhill stuff and trying to hit somebody and do that stuff. But nowadays, with so much motions and shifts and quarterbacks getting the ball, it's more lateral now, you know, with the linebackers. But, you know, speed, can they play in space, you know, and uh, can they cover in space, you know? Can they put them up and down? Yeah, we wouldn't have had a shot. <laughs> well, you obviously that. have to learn how to coach that differently. I mean, yeah. was that a tough transition, I guess? You know, obviously, like, evolving with the way the game has evolved. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's college football now is yeah. what you're seeing. Yeah. Everybody's spreading it out, trying to get you in space. That's why you got better athletes put in space. But it's still football. Yeah. You know, I think people forget about the old school coaching and, and the things that, that, that uh, you learned along the way. You, they, they still hold true here. It's just there's a little bit of things that's changed and mm -hmm. that you got to adjust with. How much did that, because I know, you know, we played the Cardinals on Sunday, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, he's the head coach of the Cardinals. You guys coached together for three years at Texas Tech. And um, a lot of people, you know, add him to that tree of a guy that, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say reinvented the will, but kind of invented the will of spreading offenses out, having an athletic quarterback, throwing the ball left and right. When you were the defensive coordinator at Texas Tech, how much did you learn from him and those, you know, spread offenses? Oh, it was huge. I think it was a big part of my learning uh, as a coach, because as you said, it's 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 getting into the NFL. Um, I think where it's a little bit different, though, is they're running the ball a little bit more than they did at Tech. We were averaging like 105 plays on defense because they're throwing it every snap and it's three and out and all that stuff. But uh, it does, it, you know, the the things that you concepts that you see these meshes and like you said, widening, splitting everybody out, get stuff in space, the RPOs, all that stuff. Um, it gives you a little advantage because some of these coaches that's you know been in the NFL for a long time, they're not used to that college stuff. Oh, sorry. Didn't see that. <laughs> I was in Kentucky but, two years. That's true, he was. Right. But, um, you know, it, it does help being part of that and seeing that, and it helps in the staff because Greg, yeah, Greg said he was in Kentucky, so the more ideas you can come. It's the same thing when you talked about um, these offense changes. It's a coach. Mm -hmm. It's defense. You know, I think one thing Andy Reid you know, always says, you got to learn to change and adapt. These coaches, they're stuck in their old ways and all this stuff. They're not going to survive. So you got to learn to adapt with, with changes, with offenses, and do the same on defense. They, a lot, there's been always, you know, murmurs and talks and critics about how these players, they've changed over the years. They're just, like, different to coach. How have you been able to continue to relate to them as the league continues to change? The weird part I always, always say to the guys is this, is I'm in that room, all right, and it's always 20 and some 30-year-olds in that room, right? But I keep on getting older, all right? <laughs> so I think I'm 30, you know, and then, right. no, I'm 40. No, I'm up there in age. But I keep on getting older, and they're the same age. So it kind of keeps me going, mm -hmm. you know, which is great. But I think overall, you get to, you got to get to know them. You know, you got to build relationships with them each and every day. You know, you're talking to them on the phone. You're talking to them. You're texting them here and there. And then during the meetings, you know, you're in there. Yeah. I'm there more than there I was ever with my kids half the time, you know? Same thing with Mike. He's, yeah. He spends more time here with these guys than he does with his actual family during the year. Mm -hmm. so, so does that explain the, the reason why you tape your shoes up sometimes at practice, Greg? Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> I tape up, I spat up, I need a little bit. I still got some, okay. right? But it's fading very fast right now. <laughs> you, fading. you ask some of the players, they don't say that. What? They say that you, you still, it's like you're 25 in the room with the juice and the energy. Oh, I got juice now. I got energy, all right? <laughs> but out there on the field, like I could run real fast, but it's the slowing down that it kills me. You know, my <laughs> knees, my hips, cheapers. <laughs> we talked oh, about keeping it. things fun. How do you keep a meeting fun and, and keep these guys' tensions? Yeah, you just do different, you know, different things every week. You know, we've got certain traditions we do in our room. Some of them I can't, can't share with yeah. you, but um, you just always keep it interesting and not the same routine. You know, it's the same thing in practice, the individual drills and stuff. It might be the same technique, but a different drill. Just always keep them entertained and, and not just, you know, I think that's why me and him get along so well is we kind of do the same thing. You know, we'll do it together with our, you know, each room kind of mess with them a little bit mm -hmm. and um, just have, have them enjoy coming to work. Mm -hmm. Like Greg said, it's just a long season. 
And, you know, you tell these guys, you know, you, they, you can't get comfortable um, in this profession of, of getting bored, you know. Don't let boredom creep in. And boredom will creep in if you allow it as a coach and you do the same stuff every single day. And so I think it's where you just got to mix it up and, and uh, keep it fun a little bit. I, I know this, a Super Bowl is the ultimate goal. Like for everyone in this building, especially you guys, coaching those guys to get a Super Bowl. But outside of that, what, what keeps you going? Yeah, you want to just? I don't, got, I don't got a ring on my finger, you know. It's been a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to get to that position, you know. And I know Kevin, a couple of guys on our staff have gotten there, which is awesome. I haven't. And uh, I want to get there ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> just forget me one of those rings. But, you know, I, I, what keeps you going is just having fun with these guys. I mean, there's nothing better to me. And I know Mike's the same way. It's a great situation for me, and I know a lot of the other Yeah, ones. just seeing them get better. I think that's what mine, I would say, is just, you know, taking a young Luigi or any of these guys, and that might see there, and just watching them grow and learn. You know, that's, you know, I think everybody says, I got, you know, I got passion for football. I really don't. I got, I got passion how well I do my job, mm. you know, and so that's what where, where I love doing. And obviously, I'd love to go to the Super Bowl, but it's fun when you, when you see these guys truly, truly get better and they start understanding the game. Patrick Peterson said today that this team hasn't played their best football yet. Uh, you guys are five and one, four game win streak, but that you haven't seen it all come together. What have you seen so far in the progress of this defense, especially in the transition that yeah, well, you guys made this offseason? Uh, you know, and I know last year people are saying they didn't finish last year, right? I think that was the biggest thing that I heard from a lot of people around here. And then I'm saying, we're finishing this year, right? <laughs> I mean, pretty much all the games that we've played, you know what I'm saying? So we are finishing. Uh, would we like to be first in defense? Of course. Would we like to be first in offense? And same thing on special teams. But we, I don't think we've played our best game yet. I know we got a lot to work through, but I'm saying overall, I think we could play a much better game, but we're winning games. And that's the most important thing. You know, I don't know what the stats were in Miami. I couldn't even give it. <laughs> right? You know, because it is what it is. We're, you know, but we're winning games, which is that's the most important thing. Well, hopefully we can get a win on Sunday yeah. home against the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, it, I'm, I'm so happy to be back at home. I felt like two away games with the bye in Miami. So, uh, Coach, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the sideline. Good luck on Sunday. And for Greg Minuski, Mike Smith, and Tatum Everett, my name is Gabe Henderson. Thank you all again for tuning in to another yeah. edition <laughs> of the Audible presented by 3M.